throughout history, men have been considered the leaders of the workforce and family life. But how can we as a society level the playing field? Did you know that on average, women earn only 77 cents for every dollar a man makes? Learn more about what women's leadership is all about today on The Younger You. I'm on top of the world and now I'm living And the good just gets better, keeps on giving Not even close to the end, it's just beginning Life is getting lighter while the days are getting brighter, yeah And if the good, I won't even worry anymore Took all my cares, still can kick them all out the door Go on a try, come and tell me what you're waiting for Move and keep them going till your life is overflowing, yeah Welcome to The Younger You. Today we're covering the topic of women in leadership roles and the barriers that society has built for women to get past. But before we get started, let me introduce you to my fantastic panel. We have Scott Hammond, a clinical professor of management at Utah State University. Chris Doty, associate professor of social work and a chair of the behavioral science department at the Utah Valley University. Nisha DeGearing, one of our ABC4 hosts here at Channel 4. And Susan Madsen, a professor of management at Utah Valley University and the Oren R. Woodbury Professor of Leadership and Ethics. Welcome to the show, team. Okay, researchers looked at data taken from 7,000 leaders and found that women outperformed men on 12 of 16 measures of outstanding leadership, competency, and scored the same as men in the other four. Are we outnumbered right now? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it feels that way, doesn't it? I'm thinking it yeah. does. Well, these are some of the questions that we wanted to pose to our panel today. What are some of the patterns you've noticed over the years about women at work and things they could be doing better to advance their careers? Well, first of all, uh, through the years, there's just more women in the workplace in general, um, across the United States and across the world. And so women generally are moving up into more supervisory positions, into management positions, and even leadership positions. We still struggle, though, with those, but across the decades, we have more women serving and more in those leadership roles. Well, why do you think that is? I think women are finding that they can do more. They can be more, they can achieve more than perhaps they thought in the past. Paths are open now to women that, that probably haven't been traditionally for our parents. I mean, didn't you hear terms like glass ceiling? And you don't yes. hear that as much anymore? Like we thought there was a stopping point and then now I have two daughters and I tell them, there, I mean, there is no ceiling. The sky's the limit. And did we do that before? I, I think my mom said to me, the sky's the limit, but and that butt is gone. It's that butt the part. butt is gone, especially at my house. But, but you've got, like, in 30 years of work, I've had mostly women bosses. But the butt is this you can't do everything. What it's do you true mean? as you mean a the male or a female. <laughs> no, you can't do everything. You, you make a choice, you only have 24 hours in a day. Yeah. and you make some choices and those are hard choices for all of us all genders mm -hmm. and i have to say that i am a leadership researcher for women and so um, i have published books and looked at the data and even though the glass ceiling seems like it's not there in some settings i have to say that it is still there in oh, a lot I think of settings it's definitely there. Um, yeah. so i think it's different i think there's more opportunities now and yes the research does show that women and men are women aren't necessarily better leaders but we're we're good great leaders in different settings um, we have different opportunities but there really still are some barriers that do are you there. find it in certain yes. careers more than others or is it or oh, across absolutely. the board Oh, absolutely, it matters yeah. what we're in. I mean, in, in, the in this state, in the state of Utah, we have less women graduating with STEM degrees, science, technology, engineering, math, and business. And so, in general, STEM areas across the United States and the world, there's less women. Sometimes, you know, those are some of the highest paying jobs. If there's less women employed, there's less women leaders, managers, and so forth. Interesting. Chris, is a, you're a, a woman manager. I am. Are you bossy? I hope not. <laughs> but you know, that is a stigma that women face. See? Is Are yeah. you this bossy? Yeah. Yeah. Well, this is what I'm about to say to you, if, I don't, if you don't mind me jumping in. My next question, hence you brought this up. Do you think studies are correct in that women are more nurturing in leadership roles rather than men? Yes. These are studies saying that they mm -hmm. are. 
So I was joking when I said are you bossy, but <laughs> <laughs> because that's what people think. They do. Agree? Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. They absolutely do. And I think um, for me, I spend a lot of time working with the staff that I supervise and helping them set up their trajectory for their career. And I nurture them in that way. So because I want them to succeed and I want them to achieve the things that they would like to achieve in their career. So I don't want to hold them back. but. I don't know how many men do that, to be really honest. But don't you think that's a problem? Because we say if, if we work for a woman and she's X, she has this characteristic, we say mm -hmm. all women do that. But mm -hmm. if we work for mm -hmm. a man, we don't say all men have that characteristic. Yeah. And that's part of the mm -hmm. issue is that stereotyping. Women are bossy, yeah, sometimes, mm -hmm. but sometimes they're not. They're and just men can be very bossy, like Troy. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love Dr. Ooh. Manson. Well, I was about to say to you, it's interesting you say that because a lot of people, and you can you can chime mm -hmm. in on this, Nisha. We've been on many shows together. We've hosted Good Things Utah Midday together, and a lot of people do feel that I am very bossy. But is that because I'm assertive and I know exactly what I want, and it's okay for a guy? Like us on Facebook for updates on the show and how to join the Younger You conversation. Because I know if you were similar to me, you would look like. The B word. Hmm. People would think she was the B word. Right. There's, there's Troy's a strong personality, yeah, yeah. but does it work if women have that kind of strong personality? I like that word, though. I like the word strong as it relates to women, not bossy. I want to trade yeah. it out for that because it's okay yes. to raise strong daughters and be strong, but you're right. The B word's not what you want to be known as. And back to your question, the literature does show over and over again that women have these nurturing qualities, not every single woman, but generally speaking, we still put women and men into masculine and feminine kind of styles. And women just do things, most women do things right. differently in terms of well, nurturing. Are you can I jump in? Can all I right, say how to multitask better than you? <laughs> I well, mean, no, fine nurturing, we, but women I, can I do. I also want to say, not all men are not good at multitasking. Because there are men out yeah. there, I'm an incredible multitasker. I'm not. I, Do you like I, how she thought? Like, uh -huh. I got dead quiet there. <laughs> yeah. I don't see you well, here's another one. What are the differences in how men and women lead hmm. in these roles? And I'm going to go with you first. Oh, I think I think men charge out. They charge out. I was in it with a group they of run managers. They run they, they run, and then they ex turn around, and they wonder why nobody's following me. And women sit there and say, I need consensus and everybody in the room to agree first, and then we'll go. Hmm. And do you respond to that kind of leadership? Or is everybody different with how they respond and who question. they want in charge? You know, it, it's situational leadership yep. because if, if you're in a, a military situation, by gum, you need to take action quickly. But if you're in a the work kind of situation, the Chris is a department chair manager at a university, you know, you need consensus in that environment. And she's a darn good one, by the way. Well, thank you. <laughs> do men defer to you, though, Chris? Or do you defer to them? Well, it depends. My dean is male, um, and most of the faculty, it's probably fairly split, but I think there are a few more male. And there are some male that don't really respond to me as well. And the two previous department chairs were both male. So there is that little piece. Does it make your piece. job harder? Yes. Absolutely. You feel like you're head knocking mm -hmm. your head up against the wall all Sometimes, the time. yes. We do make assumptions, mm -hmm. I have to say. Women make assumptions on how they should lead, but other people make assumptions. Women, looking at women, make assumptions. Well, mm -hmm. they're not staying in the box mm -hmm. of the nurturing mm -hmm. or the kind or whatever. But in terms of multitasking, in terms of driven, women are seen as those things as well. But we have, back to the comment that you made, it's called the double bind that women struggle with. So when we are assertive, and some of us, I was raised with six brothers. It is natural for me to be assertive. That's natural. But some people say, well, she's assertive, and you can be the same level of assertive, yes. but it works better on you because that's what men are mm. supposed to do. And I wanted to ask mm. all of you this particular question. What factors play the biggest role in affecting women's confidence? Oh, I think failure. I'll say in that. their own mind no, or I failure mean, in front of other people? Th this, th there, is, there is data, really good data out there that say that women are more resilient than men. I, I would agree on and, that. And, and that's because they I are labeled the early on as, you know, you, you messed up here, you messed up here. You, with, but for some women that creates a sense of I can bounce back. And men don't always have that. See, when I would ask you, is it comparison? Yes. We start comparing, mm -hmm. and I can't stand that. We do it as, as children, we do it as adult women. Do we do it as children? 
My kids in do. In a different way. My though. kids do. And maybe in a different way, yeah. but now that social media is such a big part of their life, okay. you're comparing well, yourself compare so constantly. Much. Okay. Men compete, girls compete. Well, actually, yeah, I was that's a good to say, way to say it. Men compete, yeah. girls mm -hmm. compare. So I'm not one, letting that be One bad. important element in the confidence research specifically is that boys and girls are pretty equal until really it's 10 to 13. The literature talks about that the girls dropping self-esteem in that time. And generally then, it takes years and sometimes they never catch up with boys and girls. It's the C words, it's connecting, because mm -hmm. that's huge on Facebook and in blogs and whatever you're doing, it's connecting with people like you and feeling good about yourself, but then but it's the, compa the comparison, oh, the other yes. C word, mm -hmm. back to comparing. I didn't go on that vacation this year. Wait a minute, what's mm. wrong with me? And so it's Do you think so women are affected with it more than men are? I say yes. yes. I don't know. What do I you do think? I, say I, yes. I think men compete and women compare. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Men want to win. I love that. But, but you know, they, men want to, we love, I'd love to compete against you and then we shake hands and we go have fun together. We, we don't love let go. it. Yeah. Oh, I'll yeah, hold a grudge. Yeah. Yeah. I'm more on this side. <laughs> <laughs> if I don't win, <laughs> you're out of here. This is true. <laughs> <laughs> well, it is. It is. It is. I understand what you're saying because being raised with a, a, a family of strong women, it was mm -hmm. sink or swim, let me tell you. Like you had to claw your way around. Pull hair a little. Uh, pull yeah. hair a little bit. I think it is what it is. Guys, another question came in. When is a woman's confidence affected the most in their life? Oh, I think as a young girl, right? I think you're building that. I think you're, like with your daughters, and daddies are so important, Yes. I think. Yeah. How are you building that with your girls? But there is one thing that, that well, How are with, you with me, that, yes. you yeah. know, what, what we've done is just provided any opportunity and let and say go for it it might be sports but then when you want to stop it's okay to stop mm -hmm. you know it's I okay like to that. say I i'm like going as far as i want to go but you don't have to be an expert in this i'm going as far as i want to go Bo boys get that all the time well we need to stop it there we've got to get to break because there's more to talk about we'll be back after this short break closed captioning for the younger you is brought to you by mindful medical Be sure to head over to theyoungeryou.tv to stay up to date with all things Younger You. Welcome back to the discussion. Well, I want to touch on the topic of confidence in women and what struggles come along with women's confidence. I'm scared you're going to bop me one day. <laughs> 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 You're sitting by some confident women uh -huh. right now. I know, I'm thinking that as well. But look, we can see that Hillary Clinton has thrown her hat in to run for presidency. We all were hoping she would because is it something that we want a woman to do or is it because we just want Hillary Clinton because we love her so much and she has the confidence to do it? You know, we need more role models in general. One okay. of the problems with girls and young women, if they don't see women in other roles, women, you know, whatever it is, in politics, in business, they don't ever think, they don't identify with them. They don't think women can do that. So one of the positive things with having a woman run for office is that girls and young women can say, oh, a woman can actually do that. Maybe I can think of doing that. See, I want to, I'm going to disagree with you on that. I think the thing, role model is completely overblown. Yeah. That, that young, young girls, and I have three daughters, I want them to be their own role models. I want them to say, I can do what I want to do. I don't need Hillary, Hillary or anybody to clear the road for me. I, need, I, I want to be who I am and not who they are. Wow. I like that. I mean, you I know? do like that, but there's, there's something about visualizing yeah. and seeing mm -hmm. who's in that role and seeing what you can become. Yeah. And to my girls, they said, well, why, why haven't women run for president before? Why? And that's a great question. But, why, I mean, why haven't we? don't you think we? example is a better thing? So men typically would say, well, gee, he's a good example. I don't want to be him, but he's a good example. Of characteristics. I don't need a role model. Okay. Mm. I want to just clear that up because of what you were just saying now. I don't think because a role model and wanting to be someone are two different things. A role model is, and I will say to you, I find Nisha a role model when I see her in our working environment every day. I would love to be able to be as precise and on the ball with her. Doesn't mean I want to be Nisha. She's a good example. She's a good example. Exactly. I like that and I word, think actually. An I example think is better works. than role model because we don't want to confuse people of I want to be Superman, yes. like kids do. 
But you we know? need to see that it's even possible. I agree a little bit with what you're saying. <laughs> I thought but you were going to bump him. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, she's done that before. I, I, I know the, I'm a scholar on this. I know the literature well. And this is one of the things that comes out constantly, is that if you do not see someone that even remotely looks like you, mm. and gender is a big thing, yeah. race could be another, you don't even consider the possibility. What are your thoughts on that? You know, I'm also a therapist, and I work Hence a lot. I wanted to ask you, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, and what I see in a lot of my female clients is that they need somebody to look at, somebody to pave the way for them. And we have wonderful examples in history of women who have done amazing things that have paved the way for other people. Everybody from Rosa Parks all the way down to Hillary, Hillary Clinton. Well, I, wanted, just I just want to point years. out something that we said earlier on off camera. Nisha and I were talking about Victoria Woodhill. Now, in 1872, she was the first female to ever run for presidency. Why has it taken so long since? Well, and There's she There's been a lot of strong vote. women out there. I mean, she would not have been able to vote at the time, but still ran for office. Uh, she ran on Equal Rights Party. That wow. was where she was. She was mm. women's suffrage and equal rights. Back then, they were talking about it. Why is it only now that, well, even in the last 10 years, let's say 10 years, that we are having this conversation more and more? It is becoming more open. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Why? It takes a long time for a culture to change. Well, for takes a long time for a my friend. Oh yeah, but it it takes it's like steering a, a giant ship. It takes a long time for that rudder to change a culture. We can think about it intellectually, but in our hearts, it's harder. But I want to ask one important question. And Nisha, you brought it up earlier on about women and social media. How do you feel it is affecting women now? Well, we have found in research that Facebook the way people present themselves on Facebook is now kind of making it more complicated for women because typically people will share just the wonderful things that are happening. And so in our competing culture, it's telling women, oh my gosh, I'm not near successful as so and so. Wow, look at my friend over here who's doing these amazing mm -hmm. things. So we're almost constructing our own barriers. We've got to find a way to get past that so that women can feel like they can have these options, these choices where they can say, well, I want to work a little part time here. And I, wanted, I want to stay home with my kids on, on these days, and I want to be able to pursue some of my own educational interests. Just those kinds of opportunities. But social media sometimes tends to hold them back, but on the other hand, it also makes it um, better for them to see what more options that there are. Okay. Well, it's the C words. It's connecting, because mm -hmm. that's huge on Facebook and in blogs and whatever you're doing. It's connecting with people like you and feeling good about yourself, but then it's but the, compa the comparison, oh, the other yes. C word, back mm -hmm. to comparing. I didn't go on that vacation this year. Wait a minute, what's mm. wrong with me? And so it's Do you think so women are affected balance. with it more than men are? I say yes. yes. I don't know. What do I you do think? Too. I say I, yes. I think men compete and women compare. Well, after the break, we're going to continue to talk about women leaders and why we still struggle to get them into leadership roles, even though women seem to be as competent as men at being successful leaders. Back after this short break. Utah was ranked the worst state in the nation for women leaders with less than 31% of management positions held by women and only 16% of the state legislators are actually women. And women in Utah on average earn 70 cents to the dollar that a man earns, making it the fourth worst state with regards to pay. Everyone who's shaking their head. <laughs> it's going, not okay. I want to make a comment before we go on. Okay. I did not <laughs> I did cut you say. off, I'm sorry. Um, uh, back to Nisha's comment on can women have it all. We ex need to explore what success means. Yes. Thank you. And yeah. that is a key thing because if in our minds success is being a CEO of a company or whatever, but we also need to have four kids and this and that, success can look differently depending on what we decide is most important in our lives. And we should not, I'm very opinionated about this, look down on a woman who chooses not to work. Well, I should say outside the home because working with four, I raised four kids and I was home full time and that's a lot of work too. Well so studies also show that if you were to pay a woman as uh, yeah. a, a mother <laughs> and a wife and a housekeeper, 
you could never afford yes. to have that person. Isn't it 300 and something it's, it's thousand absolutely dollars, crazy thousand stuff. dollars a year. But we need to not put pressure on women that success means only women being in the workplace or doing or certain things. Success. Can I say or, or vice full versa? Time. Yes, because that's you. the pressure I felt is because I wanted a career. What was wrong with me? Yes. Didn't I love my children enough? To and want you've to be got a lot of people time. asking you those questions as well, Nisha. And I think it's okay also for women to say, I enjoy my career. It actually makes me better at home. I have my me time and I have my kid time. And, and, and if you don't want a career, both ways. And you're right, why can't we accept women and applaud for whatever decisions they make? And I, I have some research that I want to share really quick. Do you know quick. I'm not getting to Is any of my questions? questions. <laughs> <laughs> but what I found in two different studies in the state of Utah is women felt that they couldn't integrate different things, that it was all or nothing. If they were in college and they had a baby, they needed to drop out because they could only do one thing at a time. And in reality, a lot of women say, I don't want to work at all because I need to work full time, but can you can do part time if that's what yeah. success is it, for exactly. you. Exactly, but I want, to, I want to ask you this question. A, a very good friend of mine in Australia is the CEO of one of Australia's largest companies, a female. Okay, her husband is a stay-at-home dad. No one blinks an eyelid. Mm -hmm. And she's a serious earner. And they chose earlier on in their career, I will always earn more than you, my darling. This was her saying to him. We want to have children, would you stay at home? But I will be the earner. And let me tell you, he does the lunches, he picks up the kids. He does everything that you would think a woman would do that we are perceived as. You can get away with that in the U.S. But if, if you're a serious earner. But it's for that average woman or that average well, man. Well, no, but I want to say that's a hard role. How often do you hear a CEO, as a male CEO, get up and in a speech in front of a thousand people thank his wife yeah. for supporting him? Every meeting that I've been to that I've heard her speak at, she thinks her husband, one oh, of the first things that she mm. says, I could not be here without my husband. Is that a male confidence issue here? <laughs> 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 well, I want to say, it around? You know, isn't yeah. it interesting that there's yep. a different role when a woman is a firm leader in the workforce, what are her priorities? Who does she think? First. And some of that societal. I mean, when you look at, I have a book that I interviewed 10 of the women governors in the United States, and every one of them struggled with how media handled them. Uh, you know, mm, if they wore yeah. the wrong beads with this or that, or their hair was funny, Pants and you see, yeah, Hillary and Hillary Clinton. Clinton. So there's, yeah. again, Sarah Palin. double, yes, Sarah, Sarah Palin. Palin. Yeah. But there's some double standards. Um, and sometimes well, we, ourselves, and other people, we put ourselves into a box in terms of a woman should look like this. Um, and, and in Utah, mm. that we, we do that quite a bit as well. And that goes back to what you were saying when you introduced it and said women get paid less in their careers, but women aren't having careers like men. They're redefining it. They're becoming entrepreneurs. They're working part-time. They're doing mm -hmm. other things to create it so they can have Well, I it think all. they've been left with no option. Mm -hmm. Can I say that? When women want to, we interview people all the time, Nisha, that are stay-at-home mums that have started these very successful businesses. Yes. Yeah because they've made it work. Well, I love that. It's redefining success exactly. individually. Yeah. Guys, I wish we had more time to do more of a discussion. Will you all come back? Because Absolutely. I think it's more, I would like my questions answered. <laughs> <laughs> you know where to find me. Thank you. <laughs> you know where to find me. Well, according to studies done in recent years, subordinates from companies all over the world rate women leaders better at energizing others, being tentative, and design and alignment. Studies also show that executive board performances peak when the board is composed of 55% of women. And yet we still fail to close the gap between men and women leaders. Women could just be the saving grace to business and politics if we can equal out their leadership roles with men. For more information about this show and female leadership, please head over to our website at theyoungeryou.tv and I'll see you next week. Our panel discussion was just too good for only one episode. So coming up next week, we continue the conversation for women in leadership. Well, men, men tend to control the agenda a lot of the time. Mm -hmm. And it's well, a I'm content. Well, no luck here. <laughs> <laughs> no. Well, and it's the content of the media that they control. The Younger You Set provided by Madison McCord Interiors.